Hey, what's up folks? Welcome to my video tutorial series about Chaos Destruction System in Unreal Engine. So, in this part I want to give you a brief introduction to Chaos. If you know the basics you can skip this part. Chaos is the new experimental physics engine designed for real-time destruction in Unreal. It was introduced in 2019 with Unreal 4.23. In this moment, I mean April 2021, it's still in beta, but according to Epic it should be stable when Unreal 5 comes out. Right now the latest version of the engine is 4.26. For a very long time it was necessary to compile the engine from scratch in order to enable it, but recently we finally got 4.26 with Chaos enabled in the launcher. I need to emphasize the fact that the latest version, 4.26, is not the best in all terms. A lot of stuff was improved and refactored between different versions. And for example, cached simulation feature that allows us to save and playback the simulation without physical calculations, with minimum performance impact, just like an animation, is being refactored since 4.23 or 4.24, so it doesn't work. If you want to use it, you need to compile older version of Unreal Engine. Apart from that, from what I saw there were only improvements and I really recommend the latest version of the engine, which is 4.26. If you don't know how to compile or install Unreal with Chaos from the launcher, check out my previous tutorials. So how to use Chaos? Firstly, you need to convert all objects that are going to be dynamic to a so-called geometric collection object. They can be static or kinematic too. If you want an object to break into smaller pieces in the game, you need to fragment it first in the editor. It needs to be done manually. Once fragmented, the object will break apart after applying force or certain strain to it. All the fracturing is done in the new fracture mode made just for chaos. It contains also tools for clustering, that is grouping single fragments or clusters into bigger chunks, so the objects can be uh, broken gradually into smaller and smaller pieces. Fracturing, besides of improving visual quality of the destruction, also gives us performance gain because there are less pieces and therefore less calculations. What's important, fracturing needs to be carefully designed in order to give realistic look, depending on the material that the mesh imitates. When we have our scene with all the objects set up, we might need some forces like explosions to introduce some action. This is done with field systems. That's the only way to control the simulation. Basically, every field has a certain volume and it applies force to all the fragments inside of it. The volume can be a sphere, cube or half space. The force itself is created as a mix of one or more basic forces like linear force or radial force. They can act in different ways, for example change the type of fragments from dynamic to static and vice versa. Fields are a very wide topic and I will explain them in detail in later tutorials. By the way, gravity is enabled by default in Chaos. There are three types of objects that are part of the simulation. Geometric collection. It's a mesh, fractured or not, but it can be also a collection of meshes or fractured meshes. It has a certain type like dynamic, static, slipping or kinematic. The second one, static mesh, behaves just like static and fractured geometric collection, but there are no settings for collision quality type or tolerance. The last one, static mesh simulation component, is not really useful. From what I remember it was used in Unreal 4.23 to make static mesh collide with geometric collections or so. We usually need geometric collection. Sometimes when the object is not really important, static mesh is fine too. Then we have solvers that are responsible for calculating collision resolutions. In Chaos there is always a default solver which we will use through this tutorial series. We will just tweak its settings. All geometric collection objects have one solver assigned and they react to other objects within the same solver. You might want to use more solvers, for example to tweak performance when let's say one building is collapsing and another one is collapsing far away from the first one. Or if you just don't want certain groups of objects to collide with other groups. I should also mention about integration with gameplay. Geometric collection objects has two events. When a cluster is broken apart and on collision, those events contain a few variables like location and mass. That events can be used to for example spawn something when an object like a barrel is blown up. It could be done better because there is no control nor even access to individual pieces of geometry, but still there are plenty of ways to make use of it. When it comes to visual effects, it's possible to integrate chaos with Niagara particle system in order to create effects for breaking, collision and trailing events. We will go through all this step by step in later videos. So that was a short overview of Chaos and we will go more into the details in uh, future tutorials. If you like the video, like it, post a comment, 
subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorials. See you.